Today's topic will include graphic scenes, violence, sexual content, and disturbing information. Viewers' discretion is advised. Hello, this is Prince de Guzman. It's Thursday night. You know what that means. Welcome to the third episode of True Crime and Wine. Today, I'm dressed up as the Undead King from the Netflix original series, Kingdom. If you want to learn how I did this makeup transformation, go check it out in my previous video. Today, I will be talking about a case that I've never heard before, of course, until I research about it. We all heard about the brutal murders of the Zodiac Killer in the United States, but did you know that in South Korea, there's a recorded serial killer dubbed as the South Korean Zodiac Killer? Ooh, this is interesting. He was confirmed to be responsible in the rape and murder of 15 women. So tonight, sit back, relax, get your wine. Tonight, we will be talking about Lee Chun Jae, aka the South Korean Zodiac Killer. Let's get into it. Let's begin with the Hwasong murders. The movie Memories of Murder, directed by Bong Joon-ho, was based on the true story of a series of murder that took place in Hwasong, Gyeonggi province. On September 15, 1986, 71 years old, Lee Won Im disappeared while returning home after visiting her daughter. September 19, 1986, four days after her disappearance, at about 2 p.m., her body was found in a pasture. Ooh. On October 23, 1986, after more than a month from the first murder, another 25 years old female, Park Yoon Suk, was found murdered in a canal. Three more murders happened within a six kilometer radius of Wasong, prompting two million officers, a record number for a single case, were mobilized to investigate the murders. So during this investigation, there are rumors that the killer was targeting female who are wearing red. This information led the female officers to wear red in an attempt to lure the killer into a trap. During the span of this investigation, the suspect count amounted to 21,280 individuals. Even though there were extensive efforts in solving the murders, the police didn't get close enough to finding the real culprit. Take note that the Wasong murders took place in 1986 to 1991, and during that time, there are no advanced technologies to solve crimes. So the only way to find the killer is, of course, to deploy police officers. I just want to put that the way they solve crimes before is not the way that we solve crimes today. Four of the possible suspects even resorted to suicide during the 1990s after being investigated and allegedly abused by the police. So imagine the panic and paranoia of the community and the pressure that has been put to the police. So if you have seen the movie Changeling, it's also based on a true story of the chicken coop murders. So kids started disappearing and what the LAPD did was substitute the missing children with a different child just to clear out their name and show the people that they are doing their job. So I think this has the same scenario. Later, you'll know why. The Huaso murders reached 10 victims from 1986 to 1991. These are women ages 14 to 71 years old, most of them raped before being murdered. So this is why I compared the situation in the movie Changeling to our case today. Adding here a valuable info, let's revisit the eighth murder that took place on September 16, 1988. Yoon Sang Yo, a 22 year old man, was arrested on July 27, 1989. Yoon admitted that he was guilty during questioning, but a forensic presented only 40% match from the pubic hair samples. So, 40% match didn't even reach 50. So, the court ruled that this is a copycat crime, meaning Yoon was just imitating the previous murders. Yoon was sentenced to life in prison but appealed the ruling at the time and claimed that the police forced him into giving false confessions through torture. So the police 
did it again. Sadly, his appeal was denied and he served 19.5 years in prison. He was then released on parole in the year 2009. Remember this man, Yoon sang -yo. We'll get back to him later. So fast forward from 1991 to 1994. On January 18, 1994, a man named Lee Chun Jae was arrested for the murder of his 18-year-old sister-in-law. After Lee's wife left him in December 1993, he invited over his 18-year-old sister-in-law and then proceeded to drug, rape, and kill her on January 13, 1994. So the authorities started to investigate the case and began to question Lee. And apparently, he was very suspicious. The authorities' light bulb ticked as he asked these questions. How many years do you serve in prison for rape and murder? Why would you even ask that? So long story short, Lee was put into trial and convicted within the same year with the court sentencing him to life imprisonment. So right now we have two men, Yoon Sang-yo and Lee chun Jae. Fast forward to September of 2019. While Lee was already serving life imprisonment in Busan for the rape and murder of his sister-in-law, police had finally identified Lee as a suspect in the Hwasong serial murders through DNA evidence collected from the underwear of the victims. Nineteen ninety one, twenty nineteen. October 2, 2019, police announced that Lee had confessed to killing 14 people including all 10 victims in the serial murders, which includes the 8th of the 10 crimes that was said to be committed by Yoon Sang-yo. It was proven that the culprit behind it was Lee Chun jae <sighs> Wow. Poor guy. Poor guy. So Yoon Sang-yo, the man who was falsely accused for 19.5 years in prison, filed for a retrial of his case on November 13, 2019, following news reports that Lee had confessed to all 10 serial murders. So it's so clear that the police convicted an innocent man for 19.5 years in prison. Eighth investigator were charged with abuse of power and illegal detention for allegedly physically abusing Yoon when he was a suspect, falsifying investigative documents, and forcing him to make a false confession. Do you think that's enough? It will never be enough. Imagine 19.5 years, he could have been a businessman, a great doctor, a lawyer, a successful man, but for 19.5 years, he was in prison for a crime that he did not commit. They should make a movie about him. <laughs> I mean, they made a movie about the Wasong murders. They should make a movie about this guy. <laughs> Poor guy. I wonder where he is. I should research about him. <laughs> On November 15, 2019, police announced that they reached a provisional conclusion that Lee was responsible for all 10 serial murders. Police expressed that Lee had a weak self-esteem due to his introverted personality, but experienced a sense of accomplishment and self-reliance for the first time in his mandatory military service, which led him to commit sex crimes to express his frustration caused by his monotonous life following his discharge from the military. So of course, being discharged to the military, meaning he lost his self-esteem and self-reliance. That's why he began to kill and rape. Wow, what an excuse. So not just that, the provincial police chief stated that Lee has psychopathic tendencies by being unable to empathize with the victim's pain and suffering and continuously showing off his crimes. So if you think the story of Lee Chun Jae and Yoon Sang Yo is already stressful enough, wait, there's more. Even though the police solved the case, Lee Chun Jae could not be prosecuted for the other murders because of the statute of limitations had expired. 
For those of you guys who doesn't know the statute of limitation, let me explain. In legal terms, the statute of limitations gives a deadline for which a crime can be tried in court. So for example, in South Korea during that time, the statute of limitation for first degree murder is 15 years. So just do the math, 1991 to 2019. Which means any case that is unsolved for 15 years, including this Wasong murders, they cannot punish whoever was responsible. I know, I know, that sucks, but on the lighter note, South Korea changed 15 to 25 years for their statute of limitations when it comes to first-degree murder. Good news. As with Yoon sang yo the final court hearing to prove his innocence was held on November 2, 2020, just last year, where Lee Chun Jae himself stood as a witness confessing to the murder and describing the crime scene. Wow, at least. <laughs> so the Hwasong murders may have occurred in 1986 to 1991, but this case for me is still considered fresh because for Yoon sang Yo, the final court hearing to prove his innocence was just held last year, November 2, 2020. This guy, Yoon sang Yo. hope you're doing well, man. So that's it for today, guys. Even though this case ends on a rather sad note, at least we can be very thankful that we all have these technologies to solve crime easily and identify the killer. And the most important thing, at least the families of the victims can now find closure knowing that the killer who's responsible for all these murders is now in prison. So what do you guys think in this episode? I'd love to know your thoughts please leave them in the comment section and tweet them at Prince de Guzman. There you go. That's my Twitter account. It's a bit silent. So please, I hope you can tweet your questions and I'm going to answer them in my next video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Prince de Guzman Transformations. And don't forget to hit that bell button so you won't miss my next videos. God, I love this wine. Carlo Rossi. So there you go. See you on the next episode of True Crime and Wine.